We have a beautiful short question today, and sometimes the most beautiful ones are the short questions. Is it possible to make a wrong decision? <laughs> Well, you know, even in, um, you know, quite basic levels of therapy and self-inquiry, we try and do away with these um, evaluative or uh, judgmental words like right and wrong in order to see actually what there is there. So, you know, things are just what they are and we endeavour in self-inquiry and self-exploration to see things simply as they are without attraction and or aversion. However, there may be something a little deeper in the simple question of a wrong decision because there is only really two ways to make decisions and that is you make the decision from the point of view of authenticity or that which is real or you make a decision from the point of view of delusion or the unreal. And the thing about that is that um, you, you ha you'd have to take yourself out of it really. And you find after a while that whether it's in what we call in sacred attention work the first stage of awakening or the second or the third if it's in the first stage of awakening your decisions are necessarily governed by patterns of behavior and historical thoughts historical relationships and so on so on that basis alone nothing new is going to happen always notice the the environment, the, the, the tone or the feeling or what is around the decision. You make decisions out of anger sometimes. Uh, you make decisions out of fear. You make decisions when you're sad or you're feeling desperate. You make decisions out of grief. And when you do this, you can be pretty sure that the tone or the atmosphere in which you made the decision will lead to the outcome that reflects that. A fearful decision, in other words, when eradicate fear or a decision made in hate or anger will lead to conflict and unrest of some sort. So always be clear, how am I feeling now? And of course, if you possibly can, get to a place of balance and peace, which is why it's better to sit for a while, center yourself, go deeply into yourself, your authenticity, your heart, your love, and then make the decision from the appropriate place. You don't wish harm to yourself or anybody else. You don't wish uh, unrest or any bad things to anybody. So don't make the decision from that kind of a place. Make the decision from the place you're trying to reach, in a sense. And then often you find, one, you're already there. Uh, two, and this is important, the decision may be made for you. In other words, rather than it being a kind of brittle strategy and plan of this would be a good idea, this would be a good idea, you know, this is a bad idea, and you're kind of shuffling it around back and forth, something just emerges and it's like ping, you know, the light goes on, shall we say. And here's the decision, so to speak, made for you. And you might say this comes from my wisdom, you might, might say it comes from God, you may say it comes from my authentic self. Who cares? The decision has just come up in you. It's related to your heart. It's less related to your lower chakras, perhaps. It's less related to your need or your desire or your fear. And most importantly, it's been made in the right atmosphere. You've already got what you want, in a sense. You could be absolutely certain of the outcome. So insofar as wrong, which you know, I don't like the word much, but insofar as a wrong decision goes, I'd say that would be made from your small self. And the corresponding right decision comes from 
engaging in a process of deepening whereby the decision simply arises.